Greetings and welcome to another video. Now a prerequisite for this video is for everyone to look at this video up here, which is a recent video of how I discussed supercomputer progress and how supercomputing progress is deviating away from its long-term trend line. And that not only tells us that the existing paradigm of computing is overdue, it gives us a metric about why so many other technological revolutions and elements of technological progress are five to eight years behind where they should be. But they're all behind by the same amount because ultimately everything flows downstream from the increase in computing power relative to unit cost. And you remember this image from that video, which is the gap between actual supercomputer performance, the sum of the top 500 supercomputers in the world, versus the trend line that it was on all the way up till 2013, but then started to deviate downward from. This comprises missing economic prosperity. The world economy could be 20, 25% larger by now, and the stock market could be maybe 100% higher than it is by now. And the central banks of the world would be printing more money to offset the much greater amount of technological deficit inflation and that would be good because there would be more money circulating in the economy and falling into many people's hands without there being inflationary pressure from such. So I urge everyone to go watch that video first and then come back over here. But if you're already familiar with that video, then the topic of this video is something a little bit different. How far do we project these trends of computational progress until we reach a technological singularity? For that, I extend this chart quite a bit further in both axes. Now, those of you who are familiar with this channel have probably seen my estimate about when the technological singularity and therefore the economic singularity occurs, which is around 2062 plus minus eight years. And I describe that in detail in this two-part video, which begins from this tile over here. So I encourage everyone to see that. But in that video, you can see how I come up with my estimates for when that technological singularity could occur and what the conservative and ambitious estimates of that would be. And the middle of that bell curve is 2062. So we'll take 2062 as the estimate for the technological singularity over here. And that chart that we just saw if I project the trend line, not the flattening trajectory that we happen to be on right now, because I do believe there'll be a new paradigm of computing that gets us back to the old trend line, because if there isn't, then there's not going to be a technological singularity. This will eventually flatline and be completely horizontal, but I don't believe that will occur because we have 4 billion years of data of accelerating rate of change to back up the premise that eventually we are going to revert to the trend line. So if I projected this trend line straight out, how much more computing power will have accrued per unit cost by the time we get to the technological singularity. Now, I'm ignoring this flatlining, as I just said, but I'm also going to ignore the second derivative that some people bring up. That's a very good point that people bring up, that the accelerating rate of change is itself accelerating, and there's a second derivative, and that is why the technological singularity will be as soon as Ray Kurzweil says, which is 2045. Now, I do recognize there is a second derivative, but I don't think it is that pronounced. And if we're going to ignore this flatlining of the actual computational data, we should, in fairness, ignore the second derivative as well of this trend line and just keep this existing logarithmic trend line, which is already very, very fast. So by 2062, I've extended the calendar year horizontal axis all the way up to 2062. And that means that the vertical axis also has to be extended to the intercept point. So if this trend line continues until 2062, and many of you watching this will be alive at the time of the technological singularity because the viewership of this channel is pretty young. The average age is early 30s or so, as my user data that I've revealed in the past shows. So most of you watching this will be alive in 2062. So just projecting this line outwards up to this calendar point indicates another 10 to the 10th power gain in computational power. And that gets us to 10 to the 30 flops. So this is exaflops, 10 exaflops. Assume each order of magnitude increase, and you get enough order of magnitude increases that this 10 to the 19th power, another 10 to the 11th power multiplied on top of that, and you have 10 to the 30th floating point operations per second. And that is just a projection of the straight line. Now, that is huge. That is 10 billion times more computational power than what is the topmost line of this chart, which we have actually not hit yet. Remember, we're going to hit this maybe in a few years' time under this flat curve. 
I think the snapback will happen relatively soon. So then we'll cross this line and revert back to this trend line. That's more than 10 billion times more powerful than this 10 exaflop performance of all the top 500 supercomputers combined. So that is a 10 billion fold increase in computational power. Now, those of you familiar with my atom thesis will recognize that it's not only about the amount of computational power per dollar or per unit cost, it is that a greater and greater percentage of the economy is infused with this ever rising computational power. So at some point, I'll make a three dimensional chart that shows this exponentially rising supercomputer power with the percentage of the economy that has been fused into high tech, which right now I say is about 3% of the world economy. It took centuries upon centuries of human civilization and 4 billion years of evolution to get to the point where 3% of the world economy is governed by products that are improving rapidly at more than 10% per year per unit cost. That's my definition of high tech. But that percentage continues to rise. And since it took so long to get to 3%, but getting to 4, 5, 6% is taking less and less time because this is exponential. And the singularity is when we exceed 50% of the economy being high tech, which, like I said, I estimate for 2062. And that means a factor of 10 billion is the necessary and expected increase in computational power relative to today that we can expect to see by the singularity. That means even the most powerful supercomputers of today will be inexpensive toys that can be thrown away that people would effectively give away for free. Just like we see certain electronic products that were more powerful than any computer in the 1970s was that people just throw away because such a device has no value in 2022. And anyone familiar with computers and Moore's law is used to that, but consider how huge the numbers become once a simple exponential trend continues to a certain point. And this is, again, before we are even considering the infusion of all this into a larger and larger percentage of the economy. So the singularity necessitates a 10 billion fold further increase in computational power. All computational power increases happen in supercomputing first, as I explained in that video that I requested everyone watch before this video right at the start. And that is what we are going to see under a premise of continuation of this trend line, 10 billion fold increase, and maybe more. Maybe the singularity is a little bit later than I'm saying, because remember, I have a plus minus eight year window in which 2062 is just the center of the bell curve. So 10 billion could be 100 billion even. But think of 10 billion as the median assumption because 2062 over here is the median assumption of the year of the technological singularity. And that is the amount of gain of computational power we can look forward to between now and then in this 40 year period that we have. So that's some pretty profound food for thought. But keep in mind the projection of these exponential trends as well as this gap. That's why I still have this arrow over here because this gap represents the missing computational power gain that is overdue that we are owed that is going to come back at some point and maybe not too far in the future because the economic pressure from multiple fronts, not just business opportunities, but energy consumption, everything to revert this back to the trend line under the basic atom principles is growing by the day. So something to keep an eye out for, and I will certainly cover any worthwhile developments about that subject on this channel as well. Now, if you found this topic to be informative and you like this type of content, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching.